Everybody, this is the Mind Body Energy and Balance Show, and welcome and thank you for listening. Every show we start by giving praise and honor to the ancestors, for it is their shoulders upon whom I stand. Welcome to the Mind Body Energy and Balance Show. Greetings, peace and love. Samut here. Uh, thank you for listening to the Mind, Body, Energy, and Balance show. I'm flying solo today. My producer will be back in the saddle, but I'm giving him a shout out anyway. Shout out to Flaw 700 and the Podcast Brothers for sure. Uh, and uh, as usual, as always, I'm standing strong on the shoulders of my great ancestors who have gone before. So today's show, I want to talk to you about the energy of disease and the energy of illness. You know, everything is energy, right? This is one of the reasons why, you know, my show, Mind, Body, Energy, in Balance, uh, is really, um, you know, at the forefront of discussing what is happening with our lives, right? It's an energy of the mind, an energy of the body physically, you know, and then there's a component that supersedes all of that or that really um, anchors all of that known as your energetic field, your aura, your energetic uh, presence. Now, the energy of the human uh, body counts for a great deal. You know, when people talk about chakras and they talk about your aura and they talk about energy cleaning and that kind of thing, uh, they're really talking about our body as a, as a vessel, as a magnetic, you know, an energetic vessel. And so your energy, the, the energy that surrounds and permeates your physical space creates and, you know, also destroys the physical body and manifestations in your life. So when we talk about the chakras, right, the seven main chakras, uh, shout out to Dr. Raul Nefer Amin, my mentor and great sage and spiritual teacher. He uncovered and does uh, talks about in his book, um, Light on Kundalini Yoga, the 14 chakras. But the majority of the yogic world only talk about seven chakras, right? And y'all are free to go to Taui Network. I'm just going to give him a plug right here, Taui Network. Dot com t a u i network dot com to order his book light on kundalini yoga but as i was saying the majority of the yogic world only talks about seven chakras right from the crown down to the root chakra the center line of the body um you know and talk about the energy that those chakras uh um distribute and permeate and when those chakras are out of balance right but it's more than that your whole body, your physical body, as you know, physicists and scientists have proven, uh, is made up of matter and energy. Physical matter becomes one with the earth again. So where does the energy go? Where does the spirit that is animating that physical matter go? It travels along an energetic current to what we call the universal Uh, mind or the universal energy or the universal spirit, right? But while in this physical vehicle, this physical body, that energy either creates and contributes to a healthy, balanced, vital lifestyle, or it, you know, creates and contributes to the opposite of that. Right. The negative side of that, the less than harmonious side of that. Right. Let me back up here a little bit and just uh, a minute and just share with you to help you further submit the under uh, cement, rather the understanding of energy and how it works in your life. So when you walk into a room or someone else enters a room and you immediately kind of have a vibe about that person or about that room or that space. 
you even without consciously doing it, kind of look around and check what it is you may be feeling, right? That is your energy, the auric field around your physical self registering the energy and auric presence in the room or space that you're in or from the person who has entered or come into your awareness. That's energy. So you'd be like, oh, I, I could vibe with her. I could vibe with him. That's real right there. You know, just that phrase right there. I could vibe with that person. Me and that person don't vibe, right? Y'all's energies are divergent. They don't, uh, there's not a harmonious connection with the energies, right? Now, let's understand harmonious. It doesn't have to be the exact same energy for it to be harmonious. In fact, the law of opposites attract is just that. That that is uh, likened to itself, but in a different dynamic can attract to itself the same. And spirit will always bring you or often bring you energy that appears to be opposite to you. (laughs) But is really what you need to bring up or balance or rid your life of. Now, I know people are like, look, Mama Yoga, I done attracted this man or woman and they hella crazy in my life, you know, and they violent and I'm a cool, calm person. Do that mean I need to become more violent? No, but that person is a match to your energy in some way. There's a vibrational resonance. I like that word, y'all. A vibrational resonance that helps that person's energy identify and is attracted to your energy and your energy to that person, vice versa. I hope that's making sense for everyone. So when we become ill or their person becomes ill or there is dis-ease, a lack of ease, a negative ease in the body, dis-ease, that is an indication not only on a physiological level or physical level, but is also an indication of a um, an energy divergence. The person's energy has moved from attraction and resonance with well-being to attraction and resonance with that which is not, right, for the physical body. So in ancient understanding, ancient spiritual philosophy, right, This is why the return of Eastern medicine to, uh, you see all these complementary is what they're calling it now. They used to say alternative, but now the term is complementary medical practices are really making a return to, uh, or I should say showing up in Western medicine. That is pharmaceutical based uh, medicine which is what we have in the United States, and all the industrial uh, countries have pharmaceutical medicine. Uh, and in other words, they have what we call sick care. They don't have well care <laughs> or health care. Health care means that you take care of your health. What we have is sick care. When you get sick, that's when all of these you know, m- m- medical uh, and medicinal practices come into play. But now, you know, the Western model of medicine is agreeing that complementary practices, and I'm going to go into several of them uh, here in this, in this, uh, in this podcast, complementary practices help to balance the body toward a more healing presentation. So what I mean by that now is you'll see certain hospitals using acupuncture along with chemotherapy to lessen the effects of the chemotherapy on the cancer patient, a person who is uh, in a diseased cancer state or have cancer flowing through their uh, physical being, right? Uh, You'll see hospitals uh, beginning now to try to understand the nutritional component to illness, right? All chronic illnesses, diabetes, high blood pressure, of course, obesity, uh, what's the other big, big uh, asthma, you know, um, cardiovascular illness, all chronic illnesses in the body can be um, 
remedied to some degree or another by an adjustment in what a person is eating by nutrition, right? So hospitals uh, and doctors are now beginning to look at very seriously the relationship that nutrition uh, plays towards uh, balancing and returning a person to a state of health uh, from these illnesses. So, you know, energy is involved there, right? So they're beginning to look at all these other, you know, components, right? And energy, as I was beginning to say just a minute ago, energy is a component that is slowly making its way towards the mainstream as well. But I'm going to tell you, it don't have to make its way to the mainstream because God is the best knower. Hello. And, you know, the return to using natural practices is not ordained by man and humanity's perspective, desire and understanding of that. It's determined by the flow from the universal, the divine mind, and lands with those who are willing to receive that, and then further, those who need to receive it. Y'all with me? So we have Western medicine, uh, at first very begrudgingly, but now understanding or seeking to understand the correlation between, you know, healing and uh, nutrition, the correlation uh, between healing and complementary wellness or health services like acupuncture, right? So the last bastion really uh, to come into play then is the complementary or the use of energy medicine to help heal uh, heal a person who has uh, is suffering a disharmonious health um, state or disease or illness, right? So the Chinese, uh, especially our ancient Chinese brothers and sisters, uh, have known this for you know thousands of years. Traditional Chinese medicine (TCM) is documented as being about some five thousand, between three and five thousand years old. You can do your Google's, people. And is being used very, um, you know, in a very uh, broad and precise way, or that is very widespread and precise way in China now, right? It's still, they have whole hospitals de- dedicated to uh, just using energy medicine alone to help heal tumors and all kinds of, um, you know, degenerate diseases within a person. So here in the Western world, and for those within the shot of my voice, we can understand that, you know, begin to understand that energy plays a point or plays a part in how a person heals, whether they, um, you know, the degree of illness that it takes their body or takes their physical capacity and so on. And what do I mean by that? Well, in traditional Chinese medicine, there's something known as the five organ system of healing, right? The five major organs of the body, and then the six is the brain. So, you know, these major uh, organs um, have energy flows to the organs, right? The Chinese came up with and determined the system of the meridian system, which carries the energy throughout the body. Now, let me make sure I'm explaining this so that you all, you know, I'm clear in explaining this so that the understanding is there. Right. So the blood throughout the human body flows through the arterial pathways, the veins, the arteries, etc. Right. That's how the blood flows through the body. Well, the energy the, the, the animating force, the energy of the body flows through the meridians and the chakra systems throughout the body. So the Chinese were able to map the meridian systems along the body, and that is what, how they use acupuncture and acupressure to, to tap into those systems that may be clogged or backed up or stagnant or what have you to release the flow of energy through those particular points along the meridian system. It's not just the Chinese, though. Ayurveda, the ancient, you know, healing technique of the yogis, 
you know, the Indus Kush, the blacks of India, now, you know, really strongly um, uh, um, um, stewarded and bought to the West by the Hindu community, right? That's who you see doing, brought the main yoga to the United States, right? But it was originally started by the Indus Kush, the black people of India. Shekham or Shekham, Ra Unef Amen, Dr. Amen, uh, he uh, documents this in a couple of his works, actually, uh, and also on uh, Light on Kundalini Yoga as well. So, um, you know, the energy flow through the chakra systems, you know, also helps to balance out uh, move stagnation, you know, helps to send energy where it's at a low point at a particular, uh, at a particular chakra in the body or balance out the chakras and et cetera. This is energy healing, energy, using energy to balance out any type of health concerns, right? So back to the five organ systems specifically. The five organs that, you know, we can target with energy healing or energy medicine is, the kidneys, the liver, the spleen, the lungs, and the heart. These are the five major organs of the five organ healing system. You also have the brains. There are several brains now. Well, not several. Four brains uh, in the human uh, in the human skull, and then you have uh, your reproduction, your reproductive organs. Right. So that's seven major organ systems in the body that create or can be uh, a create a sense of well-being and vitality when in balance or disease and disharmony when out of balance. So long before the manifestations, the physical manifestation of any type of illness or disease shows up, there's an energetic assault, an energetic clog, an energetic breakdown in the mind-body energy space in order for that disease to permeate and become physically visible. So, for instance, if a person... If a person is dealing with a lot of, a lot of grief, if a person, sorry about that, y'all, if a person is dealing with a lot of grief in their life, that is by traditional Chinese medicine, TCM standards, that's the lung meridians are out of balance. And there are certain breathing techniques that you do. There are certain acupuncture and acupressure points along your physical body that you would nourish and, you know, rub and have, you know, um, prescribed to, to remove the stagnation uh, of the lung area for grief. If a person is subjected to fears, they're fearful. Oh, child, I can't do that. You know, I'm scared. What happened if you did this? You know how somebody, when somebody's scared, all they can think of is excuses. Well, we can't do it because of this, and we can't do it because of that. And what about this? They the what if person. Well, what if this, and what about that? And how about if we did this? And, you know, that's a sign of extreme fear, paralyzing fear. When a person speaks that way, those meridians run along the kidneys of a person's body. Kidneys are two main organs in the back, toward the back, at the small of the back, right? So those, that's, that's a, a sign that your kidney energy is out of balance, right? And that you need to do some work there. Uh, uh, if a person is angry and they just mad for no apparent reason, or they always snapping, or they just seem irritable, like, and you just don't know why the person is always so irritable. The liver meridian is backed up and clogged, right? Or out of balance, I should say, because it may not be clogged. It may just have too much energy going to it. You with me? Right. These are the beauty of these particular sciences and technologies that ancient people used long before there were the invent of these machines and that kind of thing. Right. So to further illustrate the point about the liver. When I was a young, younger woman out in the street, you know, we were hanging out in the local bars and all that. And if somebody was drinking, usually it was caused by white liquor like rum or um 
uh, vodka or gin or something like that. Somebody would be drinking and they start fighting, you know, people out at the club and they angry and they fighting. Right. So what produces that anger? It is because your liver has been uh, uh, your liver energy is now out of balance from the alcohol. The main organ on the body, I mean, alcohol affects all the organs, but the main organ is your liver. Are you with me? We used to call that the rams, by by the way. Ooh, Lord, I'm going back and dating myself. (laughs) We used to say, child, you caught the rams. (laughs) That's when people actually, you know, fought. Now, I don't know these young folk. Anyway, let's just keep the prayers high and the energy high on that. But um, so that's an indication. When someone is angry all the time, their liver energy is out of balance. When someone uh, abuses substances, you know, they use uh, whatever type of drug of choice, you know, you can tell they usually have a short fuse, you know, uh, that person, especially when, you know, the, the effects of the substance begin to wane. It's an indication that the liver is disrupted and out of balance. Another area that we want to talk about is the spleen, a person who uh, worries all the time, right? And they just a worrier. It's a little different than the person who's fearful, right? Because worry is born. Worry is somebody who's living in the future. Like, well, what if? And it's a little different, you know. Uh, and a person who worries could be living in the past, too, because they're going on past um, experiences. And they're just worried, 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 worried. But I really think it's more of a person. Person, you're worried about what can happen, you know, what might happen. A little different than the kidneys uh, um, worry because underlying, underlying, honestly, underlying fear, underlying worry, and underlying um, uh, anger, underlying angry and worry is fear. Of course, underlying fear is fear, but all of those are underlying underlying fear. It's a it's a state of, you know, um, having had some experience or uncertainty that creates a level of fear. So the spleen, you know, is a person who overthinks. And that is the difference between the warrior. I mean, the, the person who just functions out of fear and the person who's worrying. Right. Their worrying is overthinking the situation. And that is indicated that the spleen energy is out of balance. Right. And then we come to the heart. And a person that has a heart energy just out of uh, balance has uh, quite literally what we talked about in the podcast a couple of weeks ago is had their heart broken, right? They're living in sorrow. They have grief uh, compiled with the lung energy and they are sorry or sad about uh, dynamics that have happened in their life. And their heart is literally broken, you know, in that way, right? And so there's a a manifestation, a person who is not too um, warm and friendly, just enough warm, you know, just enough, but they're really kind of like a cold and distant person, you know. That's a heart energy out of balance. The other way, if the heart energy is out of a balance in excess, the person is gregarious and they are the life of the party and everywhere they're at, you know, you know they're in the room. Right. That's called the excess of heart energy. So these diseases and illnesses show up energetically in our physiology long before the actual physical manifestation takes place. Right. And because the population by and large has lost the science of understanding how to look for these uh, symptoms or signs, um, we just, you know, ignore it as, oh, well, I'm just not feeling good today or that just, you know, we we just on repeat about the anger or the sadness or the sorrow or whatever it is. Are you with me? Now, one of the biggest problems, especially um, uh, all of these illnesses uh, permeate African-American and Latino communities to a higher percentage than they do white. Uh, so the, the statistics tell us, but I'm sure that the white community has its share uh, of illness in this way as well. But one of the, um, one of the main illnesses uh, that I wanted to share with you all is about the reproduction area, right? So a lot of African-American women, unfortunately, suffer from fibroids. And again, none of these 
concerns or illnesses that I'm talking about are one dimensional. You can't just say, oh, child, my liver's out of whack and that's why I'm scared to go to the movies. No. Or my kidney's out of whack. That's why I'm scared to go to the movies, you know, or any of that kind of thing. Everything is multidimensional and multilayered, but these are very good starting points, right? And so the reproductive area being full of fibroids uh, is um, its main component is a lack of capacity to create, right? Our reproduction creates. It creates and brings forth life. In the sexual act, you're creating and stirring up energy, Right. It's like, you know, it's really like a magician's tool, really, when you think of it on that level. You know, you're stirring up the energy and creating energy that is supposed to bring forth life force, a life form. So uh, if you're not using you're not using your reproductive for that or you're in a relationship um, that is not fulfilling and not joyful your capacity for creativity becomes um, blunted and becomes walled off, so to speak, right? I'm talking energetically, everyone. I'm not talking about the physical manifestation yet. I'm talking about way before it gets to the physical, there's the energy first. And if a person is dulling their creativity, is folding into themselves because the relationships that they're in, the relationships that they're in are not allowing them the space to be as creative and as loving and as open and as, you know, harmonious as they really want to be, then the body, the energy, the mind-body energy seeks a defense for that uh, blunting and it walls off the energy and physically the person then develops fibroids. Right. It's a creative blunting of creative energy on an energetic uh, space. Right. So there are, you know, numerous uh, ways in which the mind body energy complex expresses itself. These were just some of the examples that I wanted to share with you, um, taken from the traditional Chinese uh, medicine practice um, as as well as you know, the Western model of, you know, now using complementary wellness practices to help balance out a person's health. But the responsibility for your health, vitality, and well-being, your mind, body, energy, and balance belongs to you. You can look at the podcast or the phone or the TV or, I mean, or the um, computer screen or wherever you're listening to this from and say, Right along with me, the responsibility for my mind-body energy balance belongs to me. (laughs) And to that end, there are several practices that one can use to help balance out their energy, right? We'll start with um, nutrition, right? You want to consume high-vibration foods because eating dead foods produces that same vibration in the body. It just does. People can say all they want. We're carnivores. We're omnivores. We can eat whatever we want to eat. Yes, you can. You can actually go jump off a building if you want to. But that does not mean that the law of gravity is not going to come into play. Right? So, yes, you can do whatever you want to do, but there is an effect on the other side. So the the scientific and most anthropologically correct diet for human beings is plant-based. I'm not saying that our ancestors did not eat, you know, kill an elk or eat cow, but that or a gazelle. Y'all heard me talk about this, uh, those of you that's been following my podcast for a while and have come out to my uh, in-person lectures and all of that. You've heard me say this a long time, a, a lot of times. It is hard as what to catch an elk, (laughs) to catch a gazelle. So they only ate meat, you know, in a sparing way, not in a whole, you know, every single day of the week, you got some piece of carcass sitting on your plate, right? In a sparing way, 
even in the South when I was a girl coming up, you know, up here in Jersey, uh, raised by Southerners, meat was like a flavoring in the pot, the chicken stews and all of that. But the pot was full of vegetables and, you know, all kind of goodness going on in my grandmama's pots. Hello. <laughs> so you want to eat high vibration foods and the highest vibration foods there are, are green leafy vegetables. You want to try to consume them as raw as you can, as often as you can. You want to eat raw fruits, you know, and try to eat the fruits in the season. So I love apples, right? That is my favorite fruit. Somebody bring me a basket of apples, I'll be following them home, right? Red Delicious are my favorite fruit. I love apples. But it's not the season for apples. So when I go to the market and I see these apples from New Zealand, I ain't eating those apples. First of all, that's how many thousands of miles away or uh, 1,500, 1,200 miles away? How did they, when did they pick them? How did they keep them from rotting? Uh, and how long have they been sitting in this storage? Are you with me? So I don't eat the apples uh, until the fall, right? Uh, that's when I remember, um, you know, apple season. We used to eat apples all the time then. But you want to eat the fruit. Uh, according to the season. So we're coming into the warmer months. There'll be berries. Then there'll be melons, you know, and pineapples. You want to eat the fruit according to the season as best you can. Next, you want to uh, try to consume sprouts. Now, here's a most wonderful. We're still talking about energy medicine and the energy of disease, everyone. Here's the thing about sprouts. Sprouts are the plant beginning to grow into whatever bush it is. So if you have broccoli sprouts or you have alfalfa sprouts or lentil bean sprouts, all of these sprouts are actually the plant germinating and growing to make another bush of whatever plant it is. So you have the best of the nutrients because the plant is trying to survive. So you have the best of the nutrients of that plant now um, growing and germinating uh, on your counter if you do sprouts in your home, right? So sprouts, you have the best of the nutrients right there when the plant is young and trying to become the flower, the bush, the whatever it is it's trying to become. So sprouts are a high vibration food. Right. You want to try to stay away from alkaline foods as much as possible. That's your breads and your grains um, and even some beans and legumes. You want to, you know, really not consume a lot of those types of foods because they um, especially like cooked foods and fried foods. And, you know, Lord have mercy. I was out somewhere and I might be late on this, but I saw somebody had fried Oreos. Is these people trying to kill us? Fried Oreos. Oh, my goodness. Oof. Anyhow, I wasn't judging. I was just very surprised <laughs> and flabbergasted, actually. But fried Oreos, these are the kind of things that we are, uh, I'm, I'm suggesting that you uh, at all costs seek to avoid. <laughs> So, yes, eat high-energy foods. Some of the other things you can do to help balance out your energy, right? Because we want to head off any type of illness or diseases or growths or anything, growths or anything, before that energy becomes a physical manifestation, right? So you want to practice Qigong. Qigong is the art of moving the life force around the body using certain breathing and certain standing techniques. Tai Chi is the same way. Those are sisters, right? They're twin sisters, Tai Chi and Qigong. Go find a class, do your research on whatever, um, you know, a professional is teaching. Make sure that they understand the protocols, make sure it's accessible to you, and then take a Tai Chi or Qigong class and move that energy around the body. You want to do yoga. Now, you know my biggest pet peeve is that yoga in the Western world is exercise. It's not really about, for the most part, right, you can go to some 
yoga studios and they'll have, you know, mystical yoga or mindfulness combined, you know, spirituality combined with yoga, which is how it was originally taught and honestly originally, I mean, should be taught. But you want to go take yoga and take it with the mindfulness uh, understanding, the mind the presence of mind that you're doing the yoga to move the chi, move the energy around the body. Holding, uh, you know, a particular breath, your breath a certain way moves the energy and or locks the, the energy in a particular place and then moves that energy out, right? So you want to go and take yoga. You want to see if you can find a Reiki master. Now, you don't have to do all this whole big list I'm giving you. I'm just saying it's various um, the various ways in which you can help to balance out your energy. So Reiki is good old-fashioned laying the hands, honey. You know, back in the, uh, especially, um, you know, I don't know whether it's evangelical, but really like... Um, physical Christian traditions, they do like laying of hands to help heal somebody. It's really a transference of energy if the practitioner is true to the practice, right? Because not everybody is, but if the practitioner in the Christian tradition is true to the practice, they are transferring their magnetized and magnified energy to someone else's, someone else's physical being to help them heal, Right. So Reiki is a similar project, a uh, uh, similar process. Right. But a person doesn't have to touch you. What, what they're doing is they raise their own vibrational energy and then they transfer that energy to your physical being to help balance out the energy. Right. So that's an outstanding practice. If you can, you know, good find a, a, a um, you know, a resonant, uh, a, a practitioner who resonates with your energy. Reiki, outstanding. Tui Na. Tui Na is um, a Chinese-type massage. And a good acupuncturist, a Chinese acupuncturist, often they are trained very well so in Tui Na as well. So it's a particular type of Chinese massage that may include some acupressure. As opposed to using the needles, they may use, um, you know, use their their fingers and elbows and the heel of their hand and certain points on your body to help move and uh, or either energize a certain part of your meridian or move stagnant energy out. And of course, that brings me to acupuncture and acupressure. You want to find the best uh, acupuncturist in your area that you can find. I would uh, go in and ask them for an initial consultation, ask them about their training, their experience, you know, kind of check them out. You don't want to just go get on anybody's table, everyone. You know, do your research. And acupuncture has helped me so much in my life. Um, you know, I, I am uh, very thankful to, uh, to be, um, to be getting acupuncture, uh, with regularity from my therapist down in Philly. Whoop, whoop, John Chin. <laughs> Shout out to John Chin. And then acupressure. Now, people also use crystals to help balance out their energy, right? You can use crystals on your chakras, on your different points. Um, I know you can use jade, a jade crystal, uh, on different parts of your body to help move the energy out of the, uh, meridians that may be stagnant or or even raise energy where it's low. Um, you can do chakra healing work by using certain sounds and colors to help um, balance out the seven major chakras on the body. And, of course, you can get all kinds of massages, Swedish massage, deep uh, tissue massage. You can get... Um, Thai massage, massage for athletes, massage prenatal massage. It's all kind of massages that a person can get to help move their energy uh, around the body, right? To help dispel any disharmonious energy states. A person can also use a tuning fork, but that takes a lot of training. You got to know how to use that. Uh, in order to help uh, help uh, change your energy, like um, the Twina 
acupuncture, acupressure, uh, the qigong, the, all of these practices will do just fine. You don't necessarily have to go into no whole training thing to know how to use a tuning fork on your meridians, right? You also want to drink as much water as you can. Be mindful of the information that you allow to come into your sphere of awareness. That is the things you watch on television and, you know, the people, the company that you keep. Because for show, you can sure enough absorb negative energy states from those dynamics, especially people in your space, right? And it's insidious. Like you can't even really, it doesn't. It's not at the forefront. It kind of just sneaks up on you. And you're like, where is all this negativity or bad luck or bad energy coming from? And it's the person, people who are in your space, they are behaving in ways that you don't really necessarily know. Like you might have an idea that their character is not all the way whatever, but you don't really know what they're doing outside of your presence and they come and they bring all that negative energy and karma on their spirit and some of it you know transfers I mean it really does we're talking about energy here so you want to watch the people that you have around you you know if a person is not when you're in a person's presence and you don't feel strong and vibrant and vital that person is uh, either their energy is sucking energy from you or they are consciously just using your energetic space. Are you with me? This is my whole talk on energy vampires. And I got another updated talk coming where I want to talk about how to recognize when you are, you know, saddled with an energy vampire, right? We thank God for life and life's experiences. <laughs> so the, this, the energy of disease starts way before the physical manifestation. You want to do your best to balance and keep your mind-body energy state in balance, right? Because it's really your responsibility. Other people can support us. Other people can come and assist. And in fact, when you're in a certain space... Spirit sends people to you that have a message, that have a whisper, that have a component or a piece to a puzzle of a journey that you're on, right? So you want to be aware of that too, right? So it's your responsibility, my responsibility, the next person's responsibility to manage their own mind, body, energy space. Because long before the physical illness shows up, there was an energy flux, an energy plummet, an energy stagnation, an energy blockage, an energy out of balance. And that's nobody's responsibility but ours to keep that going. That's my show here today, and I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions uh, or uh, if you want to share what you did to balance out your own uh, uh, mind, body, energy, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I um, am so happy to be offering these podcasts to you all, uh, working with the Podcast Brothers. Uh, it's a family affair. Uh, if you're ever in the Trenton area, come down to Trenton Prime Seafood. It's our family restaurant. Uh, they do make salads, y'all. Uh, and uh, I also have my carrot tuna, which is no tuna in it. It's all vegetarian, uh, but it uh, seems to be going over very well here, down here at the lighter side of the Trenton Prime Seafood um, restaurant in Trenton, New Jersey. Look for more shows. And again, please like, uh, leave us a review on iTunes. And you can download us on iTunes and Apple Music. You can also uh, listen to my show on Google Play. Uh, we're going to start a YouTube page so that we have a visual, especially when I have my guests on. I'm looking forward to bringing on more and more guests and bringing more topics to you. For now, thank you so much for listening, and I'll talk with you soon. Peace and love.
Peace and love, Samut, with the Mind, Body, Energy, and Balance show here. And just a quick reminder, any of the information and views shared by the guests on Mind, Body, Energy, and Balance are for information purposes only. Do your own research, people, and check with your health care provider if you find something we've shared interesting and you want to look into it. Thanks for listening, and peace and love. (music) 